Thank you, Rebecca. As Steve continues his sermon series on the Holy Spirit in John's Gospel, I'm going to read to you now from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? said Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Amen. Thank you, Helen. Let's pray as we come to think about God's word. Father, thank you for the word we have of yours and the words we have of our Lord Jesus. And I pray this morning that we will not only study them, but we will hear your voice as we look at them and we think about them. And we ask you to speak to us through them, to your glory. Amen. How do you become a Christian? How much is it about what you do and how much is it what God does in you, or uh, how much is it God's work? If we were to ask people um, what makes a person a Christian, different answers, the popular answers in our society might be, well, it's about being good enough, someone who's good enough as a Christian. It might be about uh, doing Christian things like praying or reading the Bible. Some might think still that they're Christians because they're born in a Christian country although I think that idea in the UK is fast declining. Or they might think they're Christians because at one point they were, um, they were christened or baptized, and that then has made them uh, a Christian. Some may think that the fact you go to church makes you a Christian, though it's been said this makes you no more a Christian than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Nicodemus, who was a high-ranking religious leader, on the Jewish ruling council, one of 70 or so in Jerusalem, leaders, he came to Jesus at night. Now, this may uh, indicate some hesitancy on his part. He might have wanted to uh, do this in secret, not wanting to be seen. Or it may be simply that this was reflecting the rabbinical practice of having big discussions at night time. That's what they were renowned for. Uh, this was a time for discourse and debate. And Nicodemus is told by Jesus that if he wants to see, if he wants to experience the kingdom of God, he needs to be born again or born from above. And if you read nearly every translation, it will give you both options because the word that's used there means both born again or born from above. In other words, everything he has done to this point, his extensive study of scripture, his faithful service in Judaism, his status as a high-ranking Jewish leader, his diligent commitment to abstain from morally impure activities because he believes it pleases God, all of that counts for nothing. He needs to be born again. He needs to be born from above to experience, Jesus says, spiritual rebirth. What makes you a Christian? How do we enter God's kingdom? 
It's not by doing certain things or knowing the Bible inside out. It's not by going to church or following such religious practices as praying or fasting or tithing. It's not by having prayers said over you when you're christened or baptized. You need to be born again. You need to be born from above. In other words, it is a work of the Spirit. George Whitfield was a very significant preacher in the 18th century. He regularly preached to huge crowds, sometimes 20 or 30,000 people in parks and fields across England. And he also played a significant role in revivals in America. He preached over and over again on this text, you need to be born again. He was once asked, why do you keep preaching, you must be born again? To which he replied, because you must be born again. We need to be born from above. We cannot make ourselves Christians. We are, are too far away from God. We cannot reach up to God. We need God to reach down to us. Because of our sin, because of our rebellion against God, we cannot make up that gap, that distance between us and God. We need God by his grace and mercy to come and reach down to us. I think Nicodemus' reply to what Jesus says here reveals his astonishment at what Jesus has just told him. Nicodemus says this, How can someone be born when they're old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Now, he's not stupid. He knows Jesus is speaking metaphorically. But he can't quite believe Jesus is saying this to him, one of the key leaders of God's people, that he needs to be born from above. At the time, we know that Jews use similar language of newly born children to describe new converts into Judaism from other religions. And here, Jesus is telling Nicodemus, this needs to happen to him. Forget all your training, forget all your learning, forget all your religious deeds, forget all you've done up to now, it counts for nothing. You need to be born from above, you need to be born again. As a Pharisee, Nicodemus strongly believed he was firmly in God's people. He was one of God's chosen elect. He was a Jew. He, he was one of Abraham's children. The Pharisees would say that. We have Abraham as our father. And yet Jesus says that in itself is irrelevant. You need to be spiritually renewed. You need to be born from above. What's fascinating if you read through John's gospel is the juxtaposition of John chapter 3, which we are looking at here, and John chapter 4. Here in chapter 3, we have the story of Nicodemus, this high-ranking, high, man of high-standing Jewish man who was widely respected and considered to be morally pure. In John chapter 4, we have the story of a Samaritan woman. The Samaritans were considered by the Jews to be the much lower, inferior people. She was a woman, she was of low standing, and she had a morally dubious past. She had had five husbands and now was living with another man. And yet who is more open to Jesus' idea of needing to be born from above? Who is more open of recognizing that they are not good enough in themselves, but they need God? And it's a woman in John chapter 4. I think we find with Nicodemus, if you follow his story through John's gospel, I think there's hope for Nicodemus. We find in chapter 19 that he joins with Joseph in taking the body of Jesus from the cross and burying him in the tomb. I think he gets there in the end, but it's a struggle. Yet the woman knows she needs help and is instantly converted. When we think we're okay, when we think we're good enough, we don't see our need for spiritual rebirth. We don't see the relevance. As Jesus observed, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, it's the sick. And if we think we're healthy, we don't seek God for what he wants to give to us. My dad's experience was that he, he did well academically. He did well through the field of study. He did well in terms of his career. He lived in a good area. He bought quite a nice big house to live in. And for many years, he never saw his need of salvation. It was only after when I was converted, it was quite a dramatic change in my life, age 17, and then two months later when my brother collapsed on the London Underground and was diagnosed with a brain tumour, of which he was to die of four years later, that my dad saw his own need of God. 
He became a Christian aged 55. But so often when things are going well, we don't see that actually we, we cannot reach God. We, we don't even see our need of God. Let's have a closer look at Jesus' explanation of what being born from above entails. This is what he, he says if we move on. Verse 5. Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Scholars disagree here as to what being born of water and the Spirit means. Is it two experiences? Does this refer to natural birth, born of water, and spiritual birth? Probably not, because actually this, this idea of being born of water wasn't known at the time in terms of, uh, of natural birth. Is this about water baptism and spirit baptism? Is it something to do with John the Baptist and something to do with the ministry of Jesus? Well, possibly. However, I think it's more likely that, that it's one phrase, it's one term. It's not talking about two things happening. Uh, I think these terms used in the Old Testament signify spiritual regeneration. That's probably the root of what Jesus says here. So Isaiah says in chapter 44, he says, For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They're sort of interchangeable, the water and the spirit here. It's, it's about spiritual regeneration. Or Ezekiel in chapter 36, he says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Again, mention here of water and the spirit, all in the context of spiritual regeneration. Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, you need God to work in you. You need God's changing. You need God's transforming power at work in you. It's not about what you do. You need to receive this from God. Then in verse 6, Jesus says this. He says, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to to spirit. Um, you, you may know in some versions of the Bible, the word flesh is, is used for that part of us that's in rebellion to God. Um, some Bibles talk about the flesh um, as being the part of us that is, is openly hostile to God. Here it, it's not. It's just talking here about physical birth. So, so we need to be born physically, but we also need to be born spiritually. And then in verses 7 to 8, uh, Jesus says, you shouldn't be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The word wind and the word spirit are the same word in the language that was spoken here, or that is written here. They're the same word, so it could be translated, and I, I think it's better to translate this, as the Spirit blows wherever he pleases. You hear his voice, but you cannot tell where he comes from or where he's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. I think what it's saying here is that this is beyond your control. You can't think your way into God's kingdom or earn your way. You need to listen to what the Spirit is saying to you. You need to respond to receive the birth that God alone can give to you. I think Jesus here is, is appealing to what Nicodemus has seen, to what he's heard, and maybe to what he's felt. You see, he's heard words from Jesus. He, he's heard things that have, have spoken to him. The Spirit has been speaking through the words of Jesus. It sparked his curiosity. He's seen the works of Jesus and the miracles that Jesus has done. And, and I suspect that he's felt the Holy Spirit speaking. He's been moved and prompted by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying to him in this, Nicodemus, you can hear the Spirit working and speaking. Will you respond? As many of you know, I, I traveled to China for several years. The first time I went in 2007, I was with eight other ministers from around the world. On our, one of our rest days, we took a trip to visit the terracotta warriors. Here's my picture of the big hall uh, in Xi'an where we went to. On the way to visit the terracotta warriors, um, one of our group shared a dream um, that he'd had. And we began as ministers to discuss what God might be saying through that dream. 
Our Chinese non-Christian tour guide, I'll just give a picture here, she's the woman in this picture, um, and our driver is next to her and then the minister's on either, either side. Our Chinese non-Christian tour guide was curious and, and she started to ask, what are we talking about? It turned out that her mother had recently become a Christian and had started talking to her about Jesus. And then she ended up in this, in this bus with all these Christian ministers talking about God and Jesus as well. And our leader, James, who's, who's next to her on this picture with a baseball cap, he said he believed God has, had brought us together for that trip so that she could learn more about who Jesus was. The Holy Spirit had been speaking to her through her mother and now was speaking to her through us. It says the Spirit blows wherever he pleases. You hear his voice, but you cannot tell where he comes from or where he is going question is are we listening can we receive what he's saying to us our tour guide did later that on that trip she gave her life to christ we need to be born from above and this happens when we hear the spirit speaking to us which he will be to each one of us but when we respond to what he's saying i want to say two other things that, that i think are mistaken ideas and want to correct these about being born again First of all, there is the idea that, uh, that being born again is something that is done to us that we have no control over, we have no part in. It's something that happens to us. And some churches teach that whoever becomes a Christian, well, that's a decision of God. It's determined by God. It's predestined. It's something that happens to them. God chooses some and not others. I don't think that's what it says here. We need spiritual birth from above, yes. We cannot reach God ourselves, that's true. But actually, as God speaks to us through his spirit, we need to respond. And we are born again when we receive what God is saying. We reach out to him and we actually say, I need you more than anything else in my life. I hear what you're saying and I want to respond. Jesus is reaching to Nicodemus here. He's saying, you've heard the spirit, you've seen the spirit working. Will you respond? And I wonder for you, maybe you have seen the Spirit working, you've heard the Spirit, but at this point you haven't yet been born again. And you need the Lord to come and give you new birth. But he does that as you say, I want to follow you more than anything else in this world. The second mistaken idea is, is that this is about uh, a big dramatic conversion. Uh, to be born again is this amazing experience. Um, and for some people, it's not like that. For some people, it's a very quiet, gentle experience. For some people, it happens, and they know it's happened, but they don't actually know when it happened. But they know now that, that God is at work in their lives, and they have a relationship with God. And they, they have been born again, but they can't pinpoint when it happened. Tom Wright observes that there is a danger of making the moment of being born again, of born from above, the thing, rather than knowing that we are born from above. He says it's like uh, having a new baby and just saying to everyone, look at this birth certificate and actually forgetting the new life that has been created. We need to be born from above. We cannot do it ourselves. We need to respond to what the Spirit is saying to us. Being a Christian isn't about what we do. It's not about being good enough. It's not about going to church. It's not about doing Christian things. It's not about having been christened. We need to be born from above and that happens when we respond to what the spirit is revealing to us we cannot make ourselves a christian we need to allow god to form his new life in us through his spirit so let me ask then two questions firstly have you been born from above and if not have you heard the spirit speaking to you if you've heard God speaking, if you've seen him at work, then will you respond? Will you receive what God wants from you? That's what it takes. We need to respond. And as we respond, we will be born again. We will be born from above. And secondly, for those who have been born again, those who have been born from above, maybe many, many years ago, are you still responding to what the Spirit is saying? Because that's the point. It's, it's not that I responded once. It's actually that we now live a life of responding to what the Spirit is saying to us. Are we living in the new life? 
God has given to us in Jesus Christ. I want to lead us in a prayer this morning, and particularly for anyone who hasn't uh, said that prayer of commitment to God. And and as you make this commitment, you've known that God is speaking to you. As you make this commitment to him, he will bring that spiritual new birth in you. You might not feel anything. You might feel tremendous sense of God's presence. But actually, you will be born from above as you respond to what the Spirit has been saying to you. And you put Jesus first in your life. So I'm going to say a prayer line by line. And I'll leave a gap. And you can, that's for you to respond. If you want to respond, you can either say this prayer out loud or you can just repeat it in your heart as we respond to what the Spirit is saying to us. Loving God, I recognize today that I need you. I can hear you speaking to me. And I want to have the new life Jesus came to give. So I come in my weakness. I acknowledge my sinfulness. I ask for your forgiveness and cleansing. I ask for the new life you offer in Jesus Christ. And I accept him now as my Lord and Saviour. And thank you for all that is mine because of him. Amen. As we respond to God in that way, if you've said that prayer, then actually God will hear that prayer and you'll be born from above.